A Lost Perspective, Jacob, the Time Lord. This is an attempt to examine the motivations and actions of Jacob during the life and death game with his brother, the Man in Black, before and during Lost. The main bodies of evidence are found in Season 6 and the bonus features found on the extra disc in the Collector's Edition, specifically the four occurrences of young Jacob appearing in front of Man in Black, and the rules of Senate. I'll provide a YouTube link in the description. My main arguments include, Jacob is special and can travel through space and time whenever he likes. Jacob as protector could willfully change the future. Jacob started playing a life and death game with his brother once they split, at a time before mother was killed. Desmond is a proxy for Jacob. Jacob had been working at creating a perfect solution for a long time, with many failed attempts. First off, it is made pretty clear that the candidates are very important to Jacob. He visits every one of them at some point in their lives, some very young and some after their time on the island. He is the same age in every one of these encounters, from when he visits James Ford at age six or so, to the tragedy with Saeed just months after returning home. He can clearly make it off the island. Next, in season six, we see young Jacob four times around Man in Black while he tours the island in Locke's body. Sawyer, Desmond, and Hurley all see him as well. From what I can tell, he seems to age slightly between these encounters. He gets taller and his hair darkens. He also becomes more confident and active each time, culminating in him taking his own ashes from Hurley and starting that final campfire in the penultimate episode, What They Died For. Just like Walt was rumored to be special, so too were Jacob and Man in Black. Man in Black was the first to demonstrate his innate ability to talk to the trapped souls on the island. His birth mother came to visit after her death and was a major plot turn of Across the Sea. I think we saw Jacob demonstrate his innate ability when he appeared for the first time in front of Man in Black, well in Locke's body when he was with Richard in The Substitute. Jacob's hands were covered in blood, and he seemed strange or startled. I think that Jacob, during a hunt, accidentally discovered that he could travel through time. Remember that Walt was suspected of being able to project himself to places that he wasn't by the others. I think they suspected this because they had a history of someone being able to do this, Jacob himself. We see both Walt and Jacob appear in places where they shouldn't have been. I expect Walt was very stressed during his time with the others. When he appeared to both Shannon and Saeed, if he was in the Hydra station while projecting, he would have had to project through the water to get to Shannon, making his image wet. The second time we see young Jacob in The Substitute, he reminds Man in Black and Locke's body one of the rules of the game, a game that we come to understand is of Jacob's creation. We know the rules. You can't kill him. The darker hair and confidence of this Jacob tells me some time has passed since the previous encounter. Plus his obvious awareness of the game and play, and the person that he's talking to tells us he knows about a few things. The fact that his brother is not in his brother's body, his brother is trying to kill him through a loophole, and will succeed. He is protector, and mother is dead. He knows Richard, Sawyer, Desmond, Hurley, and a deadlock all make it to the island. He would take this information back with him to his own time before mother was killed to help him prepare and plan. Desmond has a similar experience after flashes before your eyes while dealing with Charlie's imminent demise. He struggled with the choices that he faced, and he either lied about Claire getting on the helicopter or changed things because he saved Charlie for the looking glass incident. With Desmond being touched by the light, was he responsible for creating the flash sideways for everybody? Why did Jacob visit the candidates if whatever happened happened? A stream of water with an extra pebble would just flow over that pebble. Why does Jacob's influence, a pen, a chocolate bar, a $10 bill, the death of a loved one change anything? Because he is a protector of the light, he is tied to the well of souls at the heart of the island. He can prevent or cause death at will, on or off the island. Examples include Juliet's husband, the psychic's daughter, Dogen's son, and Michael. However, he hates forcing people to do things they don't want to do. That lack of choice is something that he has suffered from, and he doesn't want that put onto others. I wanted them to help themselves, to know the difference between right and wrong without me telling them. It's all useless if I have to make them do anything. So regrettably, he has to choose someone to help him, 
and he manipulated most of them onto either Oceanic 815 or Ajira 316. Even with his own reluctance to involve others, he still found as large a group as he could to support each other and choose amongst themselves. Jacob changed their future and the future of the world when he touched them. All this knowledge that young Jacob seems to have gained, and older Jacob still makes the emotional mistakes that create the smoke monster? What if that older Jacob that talks to Ricardo in Ab Eterno had less experience than the younger Jacob we see in What They Died For? Desmond, with the help of the light at the swan, travels backward in time within his own body while holding on to knowledge of the future. If Desmond can do this, I surmise that Jacob, who is more powerful, can do this as well. He could live a lifetime in a fraction of a second. If all this is true, then Jacob is playing a recurring game of Senate on the island, using the candidates to make sure that he gets things right for after his death. It only ends once. Anything that happens before that is just progress. This allows Jacob to live until any point before he dies, rewind and once there is a failure and learn from his mistakes, and try again with different candidates, situations, or influences. These would be different time loops in his experience, and he would gain significant awareness with each loop that he puts himself through. To help himself keep track of his candidates and those around him, he assigned numbers to both the candidates and the time loop itself, 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42 in our case. The Valenzetti equation, which had solutions that were unchangeable, and the radio broadcasted numbers were expressions of this influence. Both are identifiers of the time loop iteration that Jacob has created, one identifier off-island and one on-island. These numbers would have changed if Jacob had chosen different candidates to rely on for that attempt. Jacob always had a thing for numbers. Jacob's point of no return comes with his death, Ben getting upset at being ignored and stabbing him in the chest. It is clear that Jacob is no longer protector from Dogen's reaction. We see him again simply as a ghost, a ghost with a plan. Hurley is great at being haunted and being told what to do. Convenient, no? Where is the paradox? The incident is a clincher for getting everyone where they need to be. Getting the Dharma Initiative established and Radzinski as militant as he was, then having our losties involved so that Desmond could be tempered within the swan just to start up the entire incident again would have required both massive and subtle manipulations on every level. I'm not saying how he did it, but there must have been many previous attempts with different people at getting things good enough that resulted in both minor and major changes that allowed our situation to develop. Lost wasn't a perfect solution to the problem with all the death and suffering that did happen, but it got the job done. There was a new protector and seemingly peace on the island by the end of the end. There are rules in the game of Senate which can be observed as an effect or idea on the island. It's a two-player game with religious overtones that was rumored to be played by a deceased individual, such as what Jacob becomes and an invisible adversary, similar to the man in black. The purpose of the game is to exit the board and begin a journey into a glorious afterlife. There are special tiles, one of which is a resurrection tile, number 27. I believe that the pool at the temple could heal the wounds of the pieces of the player in control. Once Jacob was killed, only man in black could claim the location and Saeed, which is what allowed Saeed, not Dogen, to be healed of his wounds. Jack was the one to revive him with CPR. In Jacob's game, there's a choice to stay on the tile or try to move forward. Saeed tells Dogen, I think I'll stay. Tile 27 also removes protection from other pieces on the board, very similar to the plug at the heart tied with Men in Black's mortality. Two players of the same team can combine to block the other side and protect each other, just like the theme of live together, die alone. To win, all pieces must make it off the board one by one to join with the gods in the afterlife, which clashes with Man in Black's plan of killing all the candidates at once. If no candidates remained and the Man in Black had bodily form, he could escape and eventually corrupt the light of everyone in the world. When Mother showed the light to the two boys and across the sea, she doomed one to be the protector and the other to be driven by greed and envy. My major conclusions include Jacob's time loop created and tempered the incident through many iterations. Man in Black is Jacob's constant, 
most of his time travel experience centers around Man in Black in Locke's form. Desmond is Jacob's proxy. After Jughead is detonated during the Swan Hatch implosion, Desmond becomes touched by the light and is able to change the outcome of things. Enzo Valenzetti works for or is Jacob. He could have spent a lifetime off-island researching the world. The island and pool did heal Saeed. However, Jack was the one to revive him. Jacob was pulled into this game because Mother showed him the light. He had a poor emotional response to Mother's murder, which is clear he regrets, and is benevolent towards people in general. He ultimately had to make a leap of faith in Desmond and the candidates.